I've been on countless adventures with my cameraman, Manny. Ironically, I've also fired Manny more times than I can count. You can fire you. You're fired. I'm not getting this time. You're fired. You're fired. He's fired. But he just keeps coming back. We've been to Mexico to taste the world's most expensive taco. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Wow. We've cooked what should be illegal amounts of Wagyu beef. And you're messing with me or no? No, I'm not. That's this is the steak that you just cut out of this? This is probably one ounce. <laughs> We've destroyed sulfate more times than I can count. We've harvested cacao pods, the fruit that makes chocolate, all the way in Ecuador. And we've even had a run-in with Gordon Ramsay himself after challenging him. Bring it on, big boy. After all this, I think it's time for a vacation. And either we go big or we don't go at all. And that's why today, we're taking a vacation to the best hotel in the world. The world's best hotel is called Nihi Sumba. Given there are over 700,000 hotels in the world, this place must be insane. It's located all the way across the world on a remote island off Bali, Indonesia called Sumba. With a minimum travel time of 36 hours for us to get there. Given it's the best in the world, the rooms can cost up to 20000 thousand dollars per night. It'll be a vacation, yes, but there's still work to be done. We will have three objectives on our trip. First, to find out what the best hotel room in the world looks like. Second, to discover what the world's best hotel food tastes like. And third, activities. Because what's a hotel without fun things to do? Before we go, we continue to gain on Gordon. We're catching up. So hit that subscribe button and let's go. We started our journey by getting first class tickets on Emirates Airlines to see what the food looked like at 35,000 miles in the sky. I tasted all sorts of amazing dishes on board and even enjoyed a glass of $400 Dom Perignon champagne with a full tin of Ossetra caviar. They cut Manny off the champagne rather quickly. Before arriving, I took a nice in-flight shower. Yep, you heard me right. I showered on the plane. So we finally made it to Bali, but we still have one more flight we have to take to get to the island that Nihi is on. Before that, we're gonna go do some activities on the Bali mainland. Oh, look, that's me every day. Before taking the final quick flight to Nihi, Manny and I went whitewater rafting, and things got a bit crazy. He also decided to shove me into the river. We also took an ATV ride, but then came torrential downpour and we all almost drowned in a flash flood riding up a drainage channel. We ended up ditching the ATVs after they all floated away and somehow climbed out of the side, but it was definitely the closest I've ever come to die. We then checked into the number one hotel in Asia and best hotel in the world in 2020 called Capella Ubud. It was deep in the jungle of Bali and the room was amazing. It also had the coolest toilet I'd ever seen. You gotta be kidding me. What on earth? I'm the king now. This is my throne. I even did some work on my cookbook, but keep that a secret since I don't think I'm allowed to talk about it yet. Finally, we flew from Bali to Sumba Island, hopped in an open air safari vehicle for a nice ride through the jungle, and finally, we made it. We have made it to Nihi Sumba, the best hotel in the entire world. But I have a few questions. First, what is the villa behind me gonna look like? Second, what's the food gonna look like? And third, the activities. So many activities! Let's head inside. Our villa was insane. We had a huge bed inside and not one, but two separate other beds outside. Manny and I decided to take a quick nap, which he blamed on jet lag, but I'm pretty sure he just wanted to snuggle. Jet lag, am I right? Manny, what the f are you doing? Indoors, we had a beautiful bathtub that looked oddly similar to the wok Uncle Roger told me I should cook my fried rice in. Hiya! Three beautiful separate showers and a private pool out front with a massive front lawn. Did you get a good picture? Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, <laughs> Basically, think of the coolest hotel room you've ever seen and multiply that by 100. So here's the deal, we now know what the villa looks like, but what does the food look like? If it's the best hotel in the world, shouldn't the food be the best in the world too? Before that, they just let us know that they're going to be releasing baby sea turtles into the ocean tonight all across the beach. I see turtles. Something that only happens a couple times a year. So let's go check that out. The sea turtles had to be the cutest things I'd ever seen. They crawled all across the sand, aiming towards the ocean, and were swept out one by one by the wave. The turtles were cute, but all I could think about was the fact that I was about to try my first ever floating breakfast the next morning. Morning. Good morning. We got some great sleep last night, and despite the time change being 12 hours, we somehow adjusted almost immediately. Today we only have three things on the agenda. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. To begin, it's time to experience this floating breakfast. This thing has it all. 
a nice big fresh plate of fruit, a beautiful looking French toast, assorted pastries, hash browns, bacon, and sausage, four different types of drinks, including a coffee that we get to press down ourselves, and one of my personal favorites, Eggs Benedict. First and most important, let's make sure that Eggs Benedict has a runny yolk. The moment of truth. Oh. This has to be one of the most satisfying things in all of cooking. Oh yeah! Eggs Benedict. 8.5 out of 10. Great runny egg. A little bit kind of sour. I don't know why, but I like it. And good bread. Hash brown. 6 out of 10. Oh, let me do it. It's like really shop. Sausage and bacon. 10 out of 10. Really sweet, crispy sausage, and crispy bacon. Prettiest dish on this flowing breakfast is the French toast. Let's give it a try. Mmm. 10 out of 10. That is good. Assorted fresh fruit. Mmm. Juicy and delicious. 10 out of 10. Fresh, fresh Sumanese coffee. Nice and warm. Beautiful fresh pastries. Fluffy and delicious. I'm gonna wash it down with some freshly squeezed orange juice and watermelon. And then it's time to head to lunch. The floating breakfast was awesome, but it's the second meal of the day, and Manny and I are gonna rate all the lunch foods we've ordered. And we've ordered a lot. Manny, you're fired. One amazing thing about this place is that if you've paid for the hotel room, you can order as much food as you want. Whenever you want. This first drink is called the Frozen Nihi. It's just grenadine and ice. Let's taste. Mm, it's like a chili temple slush. Since we're on such a remote island, they have fruits everywhere. So if you want any fresh fruit or any fruit juices, you can get as much as you want whenever you want. This one is pineapple. <laughs> you missed my mouth. This here is my favorite dish in Indonesia so far. It's called nasi goreng and it's Indonesian fried rice. It's a nasi goreng. You got shrimp chips, you got this delicious fried rice, an egg, and some chicken satay on the side. Time for some yolk porn. Oh yeah. So you add the rice and the shrimp chip. I'm giving this a nine out of 10. Delicious. Next up, these beautiful spring rolls. Oh, hmm, interesting. Holy. Oh, that's spicy as fuck. Oh my god, <laughs> spicy. Please. The word spicy in Indonesia means something totally different. It's really fresh, but too spicy for me. Here we have a beautiful tuna poke and shrimp poke. Oh, wow. All the fish here is extremely fresh. I mean, they get it literally right out of the ocean in front of us. I rate that a 10 out of 10. This is a grilled papaya salad with some fish on top. Manny's gonna try the fish, and I'm gonna try the papaya. That is fresh. Fish is amazing. And not spicy. 10 out of 10. I like it. This, we have a fried calamari with black sticky rice on the bottom. Mm. Look how dark that rice is. Whoa. I think the sticky rice has squid ink. So they use the ink from the calamari to make the rice on the bottom. I'm giving that a nine and a half out of 10 and I'm not a high rater. I'm not an easy rater. We know what happens when Nick eats cheese, so I'm gonna have a slice. Oh, oh shit. Take number two. Hmm, solid eight out of 10. We're gonna go digest and then it's time for some dinner. The dinner restaurant was beautiful and they even gave us a table with an incredible view of the water. Nick, you know, like I've had an amazing couple last days together and I'm gonna I'm gonna cherish these moments for a long time. I really care a lot about you and I've really enjoyed sleeping by your side. Like, I don't know what the f that was, but it's dinner time. <laughs> first intercourse. Not intercourse, just oh. say for our first course. <laughs> you said intercourse. I dinner course. Oh, dinner course. <laughs> I said intercourse. For our first dinner course, we have a giant sushi plot. They caught all of this fish here today. This morning, they sent out a whole spearfishing team from the resort. Isn't it amazing? Really good. Without wow. a doubt, this is the biggest thing of wasabi I have ever seen in my life. Oh my God. Oh, it's gonna be so bad. Wasabi. Next, we got this big lobster. As you can tell, it's a different type of lobster than the ones we catch in Maine and in New England. We're gonna see how it compares. Open up, Manny. Wow, good, but not as good as Maine. Nothing beats a good Maine lobster. Next up, we got a giant tomahawk steak. And as you all know, we've had a lot of tomahawk steak over our time. Mostly Wagyu. Actually, all Wagyu. Feed Manny right off this tomahawk. Time to taste the Sumba steak. Really well cooked. How's it compare? Could use some more seasoning. A little Osmo, maybe. With the steak, they have these big potato fries. It's literally mashed potato in these big fries. It's delicious. Manny, try it. Oh, wow. Oh. That's good. Sorry. Last but not least, we got these amazing whole fish. In a lot of places, everybody fights for the cheek meat. So I'm gonna go for that first one. I have no competition. We've done a lot of eating here. With that said, I think it's time to do some activities. Yep. First activity, we're making chocolate at the chocolate factory. Today, Nick and I are Oompa Loompas. <laughs> wow. Roasted cacao bean. It is better, but it's good. First we go aprons on. I did not mean to do that. My head is skinnier than Danny's. Ah, first we roast the beans. Nick's trying to say that now we grind the beans. Then we blend for one hour until we get this. The cocoa brick is then melted down in a pot for an hour. Now we mix in some cocoa butter. Oh, so nice. Then we stir to temper. Once the chocolate is properly tempered, it's ready to be cooled and shaped. Now I'm gonna pour out half the bowl on the marble table. Wow, look at that. We then use these palette knives to spread the chocolate to help it cool even more. I let Manny do the heavy lifting. And after a while, the liquid chocolate started to solidify. Finally, it was ready for us to put into molds. At this point, the chocolate is thicker than Nick. So now the chocolate's almost done, but we got all these toppings and Manny and I are gonna compete. And then the chocolate masters are going to taste who's better and we'll have a winner. For my toppings, I'm gonna do crispy rice and sea sauce. Let's do some research. 
Oh. I'm gonna do some of these puff crispies and almonds and sea salt. This is gonna be an easy win. Now it's time to mix four scoops of our chocolate. After mixing our toppings in with the chocolate, we carefully drop the mixture into the mold. So just by looking, whose do you pick as better? Nick or Manny? Yes, it's Papa. <laughs> ah. <laughs> First time I've won. This is gonna be an easy one. Activity one down, activity number two, seesaw. Activity three, catch a lizard. Manny, get it. Let me try. Oh, oh, oh I touched <laughs> it. I'm kind of scared. Mission failed. Activity four, ride the tuk tuk. Manny, get in, get in the back. Okay. Number five, ping pong. Number six, time to garden. Here we have our aloe. I could toss this salad. Tomatoes. Lots and lots of microfoods. Grew them myself. They even have a cacao tree, and you know how much we love cacao. Chocolate. Next activity, boat ride. I'm the captain now. No. Oh. oh. We dropped Manny off on the beach, and I took the boat back out for our next activity. Spearfishing with some of the island's best spear fishermen. These guys were underwater snipers. We jumped into the water, and almost immediately my spearfishing buddy Oya started swimming straight into the murky water until I couldn't see him anymore. Then suddenly, a small shape emerged, and Oya had managed to spear a small fish. Soon after, we motored to a new spot and it was time for me to prove myself. Three large wahoos swam past and sure enough, it was a direct hit. So this is special cat for Nick from Nihizumba. After posing for a few pics with the beautiful wahoo, it was time to go back and meet Manny at the hotel. So me and Manny are gonna take a bath together here. But for this activity, things have been censored for the purposes of nudity. Manny and I don't need any more community violation strikes on YouTube. Next activity, surfing. Behind me is one of the most famous coveted waves in the world, and they limit it to only 10 people per day. Manny was not given a spot, so it's just me for this one. There were also a ton of wild horses on the beach, leading us into our next activity. I've lost track of activities, but it's time to horse ride. My horse didn't listen to a word I said. I tamed my horse. For our next activity, I took the boat back out with my new spearfishing friends, but this time we were on a different mission, hunting sea urchin. It used to be my favorite food, but now rotisserie chicken is my favorite and sea urchin is number two. It's time for the spa safari, which basically translates to breakfast and a massage on the ocean. If we haven't already, it's time to pamper Manny a bit. It's so f***ing hot. <laughs> we headed there in a safari vehicle and walked toward the ocean cliff. They greeted us with coconuts and we settled for our massages. They even had mirrors so you could look at the ocean during the massage. Then they led us to a hidden pool. So we are literally in the middle of nowhere and after our massage, they're cooking right on this fire for us to have a meal. On today's open fire breakfast menu, we had grilled banana bread, lots of toast, and delicious veggie omelets. They had all sorts of sides, including bacon, potatoes, delicious roast tomatoes, basically anything and everything you could possibly imagine. Wow, look at this. Look at this view. I can't tell which view I like better, Manny or the table. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. I've lost track of how many activities we've done today, but it's time to have a drink with the resident goat. This is Bonnie. She loves popcorn. Now she's enjoying her coconut margarita. <laughs> now for our very last activity, flying back home. Bye. Bye. See you soon. It'll take 36 hours, but I'll fast forward through that part. After quite the trip, we've made it back home. Both Manny and myself have returned very well rested. We experienced the world's best and had the trip of a lifetime, but it's time to get back to work. <laughs>